Welcome to the Magic and Medicals podcast. I'm your host, Buddy Abrahams. And I'm Terry Allen. A show about the moments that changed people's lives forever. Welcome to the Magic and Medicals podcast. I'm your host, Buddy Abrahams. And I'm Terry Allen. And today we have Sharon uh, Brooke from the UK. Um, who uh, we actually, you sent us an email a good few weeks before, and for some reason it had been missed. So, uh, you know, the angels definitely wanted me to see your email, and then we saw it somewhere, it was bedded into something else, and uh, so we reached out, and so we welcome uh, Sharon to share her beautiful story, as we normally say, it's very organic, I know bits, but not a lot, we spoke a few times. But thank you for coming on here um, to share your uh, miracle, magical moment or moments. So thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate you having me on and listening to my story. And I'm so happy to share. Um, so, 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 so yes. Sarah, you've listened to some of our podcasts, obviously, for you to contact us, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, all the time. I was um, the last like I'd say it's been definitely this this year, like 2022. Um, I, every morning when I was walking my dog, I would pop my earpods in and I would listen to them, and I just thought this is just so amazing hearing other people sharing their miracle yeah. stories. And I just had this like feeling, and it was just so like a deep knowing of like I'm going to come on this podcast and I'm going to speak on this podcast and I'm going to share my story mm. and when you said yes I was like oh my god I didn't think that it would happen and you know you just think you put it out there and you think oh I probably won't come on but I'm so happy that you said yes and I am do you know I why did. you can feel the energy of someone writing and you can feel when you you know I could just tell from the energy of your email that there was no need to question anything so you all always know and also because I forgot to say that Sharon is also a spiritual teacher and an, a spiritual guide so we are in the similar work um, yeah. So you know, you normally know when there's an alignment with somebody in the way that they're writing to you. So uh, I yeah. just knew instantly, and it was mirroring something which I'll get to later on as we're discussing. It was yeah. mirror, mirroring something personally with me as well. So there was an alignment of you know from the universe with us. So uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you, and I'm just so happy to be here. So yes. Um, I wasn't always a spiritual teacher and spiritual guide. Um, I, um, before my spiritual awakening, I was a primary school teacher, um, which is an elementary school teacher in the US. And um, I was very much just living out the nine to five job role, really. We just bought our first house. Life was going good and I had no real challenges. And then in August of 2015, my whole world just completely turned upside down and I lost my mum to suicide. She was only 58. It was the biggest devastation of our lives. It was an absolute shock and so unexpected. And it just caught, it just came completely out of the blue. And I wanted to come onto your podcast to share my story of suicide mm. because there's not many stories that we can no. find out there. And, you know, and I remember so deeply when I was going through my loss of just wanting to hear another story and somebody who could understand and connect and relate with me because mm. it is a very different journey yeah um, so I wanted to come on for that and I want to share my story and um, story of grief and understanding mm. death and mm -hmm. also this magical miraculous spiritual awakening that I had that has just completely transformed my life it, yeah, so, it, it, we completely, completely can understand, can understand and relate to uh, what you've gone through. What you're, and that's what picked it up was, um, and I will do my own, you know, I don't take it away from your moment, but I will be talking about my own experience where my brother took his life last October. So we completely understand yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I think absolutely. when you've been there, people, you know, it's, it, it does have a rippling effect and it does absolutely. have a... Like you said, I'm, I'm, you know, really excited to hear your story. It does have that spiritual miracle growth moment? It's hard Absolutely. to explain in such a tragic yeah. time, but I don't want to take it away from you. So please. You know. Yeah. Well, no, Terry. I remember when you told me that had happened, and we spoke about that on the phone, as you mentioned. And I, I thought that that's 
why I've that's why I'm here and yeah you yeah. know so I just knew that that was the connection and almost yeah. like well it's know, many connections because I work with children as well yeah and then yeah. you and when you said about this so there was there's angels so the suicide the, the children so there's a big yeah. alignment with us there's really. a big alignment yeah absolutely yeah so death and suicide are just two extremely heavy topics and you put them together and you have this big mix of you know probably one of the heaviest topics um because it's surrounded by so much fear and so much negativity and i remember when it happened for me and my family, uh, people just didn't know how to how to talk to me really, mm. and what to say to me, mm. and how to even act around me. Um, I mean, this how, was were you, how old were you at the time? At the time, I was twenty eight. At the time, I keep thinking was I twenty seven, twenty eight? I'm thinking it was yeah, around about that age. But um, your mom, yeah. you said, suffered with mental health anyway. On and yes, off, is that correct? On and off, yes. So we we didn't know that was the case. It was only looking back. I think for a long time, my mum had hidden that she had that she was suffering from it was anxiety, and then depression led later. Um, but it did start with anxiety. And I remember back when we found out this was all looking back after we weren't aware of this as growing up. But when we were connecting the dots back, um, when I just after my mum had given birth to me, she did suffer from a little bit of like postpartum right. things like that and a little bit of anxiety then and mm -hmm. uh, because my auntie had you know told us all about that a little bit more but you know so there was definitely it was there and when I've looked back at everything there is like a lineage of like the women in my, from my mum's side of the family mm -hmm. that did you know suffer from anxiety anxiety particularly and depression mm -hmm. um so it was always there and I think my mum came from that generation where they they hid it you know so it yes. was it was that era where it was there was a lot of stigma attached to mental health and suicide. Yes, yes. There was, um, you know, that very much that keep calm, carry on type of approach. And it's not something that she shared with her family and especially her children. You know, there's three, three daughters and she didn't, she just was so strong and just kept it so hidden. And the menopause, so this is how it came about yeah. later in life. So she was fine throughout all of her life. And like I said, there was, that's why I think we didn't notice anything because it was, you know, she was getting through everything. And then the menopause happened and that heightened it. Mm. And it pushed it, like it brought everything back up, um, you know, anxiety again and um, just like, you know, like panic attacks and, you know, all those things that was coming with the menopause um but she was she was just very much saying oh I'm just going to through the menopause I'm okay I'm all right you know we didn't know any of this was going on until we look back and we think okay you know perhaps there was this we, we're guessing panic attacks must have been going on mm. um but we didn't ever see anything we didn't ever know anything that that, that was going on so I also was, thinking I also think in those days woman going through menopause was it wasn't so advanced because but it's still not you know it's it's, it's very much <laughs> advanced but they yeah, don't really correct because it's, an, it's a hormone imbalancement yeah, that comes through cover it well and it covers it well and 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 because my mum went is gone through it as well I'm on but it's mm -hmm. it's i think it's that generational gap where there was no education in terms of how to balance your hormones and in terms of get getting some treatment and and that 100% can affect the mental health of someone as well because you kind of feel like you're not sure about your body you're not sure what's happening with your body and and you're not yeah. sure what emotions do you go through you kind of think it's normal I think as a female you know that's you know I'm a lot older than you um I think when you go into menopause you um you don't identify straight away with the emotions you just don't know what's wrong with you you know you can feel yeah. very heavy very down like you said i didn't get anxiety mine was more heavy down couldn't understand why i was down because of the imbalancement of the hormones that are dropping and yeah. i think yeah i think back then i think it was the patch if she ever got one and that was yeah. it you know and still yeah. today it's actually not covered that well correct it's not well well covered it's not no i know that's right and, and it 
Sorry. Sorry, Hugo. I, I was just going to say it was my with my auntie because she they were a similar age. My mother, my mum, and my mum's sister. They were very close, and you know my auntie kind of clued us in on all of this menopause because um, she obviously had just gone through it and she was saying your mum must have been having this she must have been having you know yeah, on top nice of what was sweat. already there yeah on top of that and then it's it's totally just being like a, a mixture and just too much all at once and I think she just she was just suffering in silence and we were so oh it was just you just wish she didn't you know it's like we and how did you, how did you like when she did it at the time how, what how did you feel what was your reaction when it happened yeah so okay so when it first happened i was just it, it was complete shock and denial um i remember just being so like like angry angry at why she did it and why it happened and, and i was just thinking how did this even come about where did this come from um i was angry that there was just no awareness there was a huge lack of awareness that we were given around it as a family you know there was no teachings on it there was just we just didn't have anything it was absolutely just so clueless on everything so I remember feeling really angry about it but then I I understood as as I did more research that you know this you know the, it it is a deeper it's a lot deeper than you feel but I think you do feel that at the beginning um did you, you know. did you when your mum did it obviously there's a cord attached to to everyone that's involved so did you kind of have a feeling on that specific day or time when she did it where you felt uncomfortable where you felt something I know at the time you probably didn't have your spiritual awakening where you weren't so much in tune with your with yourself or some or the other but was there some sort of inclination in terms of gut feeling where you unsettled about something that day when when it happened Oh, that week? Yeah, yeah, I think that week, yeah, I think we, yeah, I think looking back, I think I did feel like something was like thinking, oh, it's, it's, I feel like, I felt like I was going to lose her in some way, but I didn't know it was mental health, and I was wondering if she, if there was some other hidden illness, like a cancer or something, and oh. I, I did, yeah, and I was very confused, and then I remember my two sisters had the same thing and my dad wow. they um my sister had kept having these thoughts of losing mom and mm. um she was and she was worrying a lot and thinking i just have this bad feeling and like and i did too but we couldn't put our finger on it we mm. did not know at this point mm. there was it was mental health we didn't know about anxiety or depression we didn't know that and we were trying to rack our brains thinking i wonder if there's some other illness that she's been diagnosed with or there's something you know there and then my other sister um we'd just all been away on like a, a recent like a week a long weekend trip and my sister lives um in london and when she went um to get on the train and she hugged my mom she said after everything had happened she said i remember the last time i saw her and i felt like that was the last time i was going to hug her wow and yeah and, and again so her soul we, then at that moment remembered because yeah. you yes. all wrote it in, right? Before we came down, your mother That's wrote that in. Absolutely, absolutely. So your soul was remembering, yes. uh-oh. Yeah. Absolutely. And she and my mum must have known this is the last time I'm going to see my other sister. Yeah, and she would have known. That was yeah, that energy known. connection, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think my mum did know, and I think it was something that she, you know, was trying to put off for a long time. Um, and because they do want to stay of course they do like I think you think oh they they've decided to go and it's just this quick decision of I'm going to go now or I'm going to stay now and it's, it's absolutely not like that it's the pain is so intense and they want to stay mm. but the anxiety and the depression just overshadows Overrides and overclouds everything. all of their connection the to the family yeah. Love them and yeah, it absolutely. Very interesting. and they just focus on that pain and I like to think of it like the brain and um, the brain is an organ and the brain got sick just like the heart yeah. would get sick mm, with heart disease right. and we need to understand a lot more you know and, and see mental health more in that way i think and understand it as mm. an illness and mm. to treat it equally like this other like the other illnesses and for it not to be this stigma because if there was not this stigma you know, my mum would have opened yeah, about I it, agree. she would have talked about it, she would have gone would have to got, 
see Groups specialists. See some, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. But also, I, I think there should be no judgment towards people that that does take their own life. Yeah, you know, because there is, there is a, a there is yeah, a stigma it's against it right. because mm. how religion has taught us that it's wrong or whatever the case might be. For us, everyone has a path in this life, and it's a decision that everyone makes. So, I look at it from a point of view that the soul was extremely unhappy, and that's the reason why the soul wanted to go home. You know. Yeah. And there should be no judgment towards whatever it happens because it could happen in someone having a car accident. It could happen in, in some or the other. It's just a choice that that person has made before they come down. This is the way they're going to go back home, you know. Yeah. And, and but it's, it's not just that. I don't think it's about them so much as well. I think it's more, it's a very brave thing that they do. Extremely. And then mm. I think secondly, it has a big knock-on effect rippling effect to many many people friends family etc work yeah. colleagues and so it has a massive teaching there uh for everyone because the you know people have reached out to me afterwards and they're like you know trying to get over their guilt or they feel bad or they didn't do enough or the, so there's a big yeah. lesson. lesson there for everybody and, and an awareness just, if you want to take that spiritual growth and awareness you know in, in looking at themselves and looking at life. I think when someone does something like that, uh, for me, and listening to the people that we've spoken to, or my brother's friends, is the fact that, I don't know about you, but they it gave them, a, it woke them up massively. Yeah. yeah. Like massive. Have yeah. more compassion for each other. I don't know about yeah. that. I don't talk about everybody, but I just feel from speaking that there's more sense of awareness of oh i need to watch people more i need to look into things more but anyway getting back to you yeah. is the fact that so when it happened and obviously are you the only sibling or you said you got uh, a sister yeah two sisters yeah two mm. sisters um yeah and i'm the youngest <laughs> so um yeah but i mean growing up we we didn't really talk about death at all it because that is something. your mom and as a, mm -hmm. as a child you would think why has mom left us like would, yes, did you, i'd like to ask that yeah. question actually did mm -hmm. you feel <clears throat> at any time like did she not love us enough because she left us no, it's I just a question was, I want to ask. Yeah, because it was more the, the, I think that's where, when I was saying like you feel angry, I think that's where the anger comes in because you think they've left yeah, you. Yeah, why yeah. did, she, she, why did she leave me? Yeah, and it's almost like, why? Like, why? Because that's hard for it, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and with not knowing and not understanding um, and not having that awareness, you know, 2015, there was not very much awareness. It's still not today. I mean, it's there's a long way to go, but we, you know, we didn't have any awareness, so we didn't know understand the lead up to everything we didn't understand the heavy pain we didn't understand everything that she must have been going through mm. to, for that to happen so we were just thinking oh why did she leave us you know and of course it's so much bigger than that but that's where you, your mind goes straight away because we we think it's just a simple decision but it is absolutely not it is a really tremendously strong heavy decision that has come with a lot of thought and a lot of you know it's not just this no, it's not I, I just don't believe. Yeah, I don't yeah. believe it's just a quick decision, um, and and absolutely not. But growing up, we we didn't talk about death. We didn't talk about mental health awareness. We didn't we didn't really talk about anything, any of the topics really. Spirituality wasn't a topic really, um, and I guess it's the type of thing that you don't really talk about until you dealt with something in your life we weren't really challenged as a family to ever have to when deal your mom, with anything and when your mom like passed over did she come and visit you in your sleep or in that yes that's the first uh, thing i want to ask yeah your dad yeah. or your sister or you or did she come yeah absolutely so yes i have lots to say on that so okay, okay so i um so yes yeah, so i had a dream um shortly after a couple a couple of times after and because I, at the time i was just trying to figure out why and figure out what could we have done to have stopped it and how could we have mm. how could we have prevented this from happening mm -hmm. and she i did have a dream and in the dream um she showed me because i was thinking oh if only we could have like got her into like a, a hospital and got her a specialist and got her taken care mm. of you know it, it made it we could have prevented it from happening and she showed me in the dream that it was going to happen anyway, even oh. if 
yeah even if um if if this was stopped this time she would have done it did she come and time. talk to you in the dream or did she come she showed sure, she pretty much showed me um like she didn't show me her death or anything she just showed me through a stage of events where we were looking um so we we were in in my dream we were all watching her so closely and we were on a rotor schedule on the dream and we um were all taking turns so my dad had this time and my sister said and we all had this timetable set up so she was getting watched like a hawk and in the dream it ended where she still got to do it anyway no matter how much things we all put in place so she was to trying stop to give it. The message she was again. trying to give me the message that it's this a path. is my decision yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a path absolutely and 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 she and like you said i am a firm believer now um like i said we didn't talk about death before but now i love mm. talking about death and life after death um because mm. i understand it i understand that we're souls that have come here with for, a, for an experience with spiritual beings having a human experience we've come here and we've signed up for certain lessons certain challenges we've come here to grow and to expand and to remember who we are and what i feel is that we take on these challenges and we choose certain things and i see it as like earth school and we come here and we major in some things and we minor in other things and we choose our lessons and i truly believe this is the classroom and i agree with both of you guys that she absolutely it's you make the plan you make these things these huge things of life when you're born when you die and all of the challenges and the lessons that you want to take on in this lifetime you mm. do choose before you're born because it's a it's a blink of an eye like one lifetime is over with like you know it's like a, a clap of a hands and it, it's over for the soul compared to you know time and space reality like a lifetime is really short so for them these lessons and you know they they want to take lessons on for soul development and soul growth so after that when 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 that happened how did i mean obviously you were still a teacher correct yeah so yeah, i was still teaching so yeah. what happened what spiritual help came in for you for you to obviously heal and grow and from the experience yeah. it is a healing you will need healing from an outside source yes absolutely yes so there was lots of things the main one was my own personal spiritual awakening story which um would you like me to go in should i go into that yeah yeah because yeah yeah okay so um okay so I'll, I'll back up just a little bit with that so the so there was like lots of all this stuff was going on with um, dealing with death and everything and um it was time to go to the um resting room to visit my mum in the resting room and this was the day before the funeral and we you know this was really really hard for us to go to because we you know it, it it was just extremely hard and i think it's because it's reality you're facing the reality now of like you know and and, I, and yeah. for so long i was searching around and i was looking for answers and trying to put this big like piece of the puzzle back together because i always thought that if i could just figure everything out and i could understand why she did it and i could put all the preventions in place I could stop it from happening and she would come back and that's what I was telling myself for like two weeks up until the funeral I was like she hasn't really gone this is a nightmare this is not real I can bring her back if I just figure everything out so when it was time to go to the resting place I was you know I found that really hard to go to because I was like okay this is now like really accepting reality now um and we went there and um my dad went in and he spent a bit of time with my mom and then my sister went in and i was in i was struggling to go in and i remember saying um to my sister oh, were you coming with were you coming with me um because i don't know why we never all went in as a family i don't know why we chose to go in separately but it oh. was it was good that we did i think this is why the fear was so bigger for me because we were all going in separately um and so my sister went in and she said and i said will you come in with me and her advice was no no sharon you've got to go in um oh. on your own and um because i want you to have an experience that i've just had and she did come out and she was so peaceful and content and she said you'll have this amazing experience 
and oh. just on your own if you go in and she said because I've had one and dad's had one so go in go on your own so I'm like oh, okay I'm gonna have to oh. go in on my own I mean she would have come with me if I dragged her in with me but you know it's it, it's like going in on your own is a big it is a big thing mm. so I remember stood at the um resting room um the resting room door ready ready to go in and I froze and I was like, yeah. oh, I can't do it. I can't go in. I yeah. don't want to see my mum this way. Because yeah. I was just thinking, is this how I'm going to remember her? And it's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. how are you going to remember them. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't you don't think about that time. You you think about the happy memories, but you know, your mind is fear all creeps in. So I stood there and I froze. And I saw this young guy who worked there and he was about my age and he was walking in and out of the rooms just so casually and easily. And I was like, wow, look at him. How is he, <laughs> how is he able to just do this? Oh, I and, know, I'm with you. And, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, come on, Sharon, you know, just, you know, get, get, get inside the room. Anyway, he came over to me and he said, are you OK? Are you struggling to go in? And I said, yes. And he said, Right, he said, I want you to do this. And he, and he gave me some advice. And his advice was, I don't want you to think of your loved one as passed away, as not alive. I want you to think of a very fun, joyous, happy, the better, one of the best memories of you and your mum together mm. that you can think of. And I, I want you to stay there for just a couple of minutes. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to feel into that place. Mm. And I did, and I was able to go into the room. But the strange thing was, and I know you guys will probably agree on this, um, Earth Angels. Now, you know, I just I... got the same message. <laughs> I was sitting yeah. there and I yeah. knew that was some angel there. Yeah, that absolutely. That was helping you and talking to you. Absolutely, because nobody had seen him. And when I said at the yeah, end of I my... just could feel it, could you? Yeah, I got I just, goosebumps I, Yeah, you when you were me. saying it, that, it hit <laughs> like a bolt through my heart. And I thought, no, that person was an earth angel. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. One of you never saying... saw him afterwards again, did you? No, and I asked my family, oh, I said, so did that nice. again? That's, yeah. that's amazing, beautiful. that's beautiful. And I said, did you You're did 100% you right, guy? by the way, because we're confirming that, because I just felt mm. it. And I, yeah. the message I got was, that was an angel. Person. yeah absolutely and he gave me the the confidence the you know everything to go inside the room and I went inside the room and you know I was it, it was the most unbelievable sense of peace and unconditional love that I'd ever oh, felt wow it wow. was so magical and I was thinking why was I so afraid to go in here this is beautiful because we've here. seen movies I think yeah. Mm, yeah. Where you see people and you think, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what I think it is. Yeah, it is absolutely. You're right. And then we think about it and we think, oh, this is this I'm going to have be this traumatic. Yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. And it was not like that. It was so heavenly and it was so beautiful. And I, even if the lights were dimmed and everything was so just tranquil. But there was so much bright white light in the room. And I knew that my mum was not there in the casket, that that was her. She was not her body. She was here in the room as full and as big as life as ever. She was right here in front of me and I could just feel that presence so strongly. Yeah. And I, I was, we were talking and I was, we were sharing fun memories and, you know, it, it, it was just a lovely experience. And I remember saying to her in that place, I said, if this is all real and I'm not imagining all of this, um, this feeling that I have right now and all of these, like, because I did have spiritual signs before this yeah, event yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So I said, if all these spiritual things are, um, are real. And I had, when I was, when I was younger, it brought back um, a, a, a dream that I had of Jesus, which I will get to later on if we have time, because I'd, I'd like to share that. Yeah, and I and and I said to my mom, um, if all of this is all of this feeling that I'm having right now in this room with you, all of the dream I had of Jesus when I was younger, um, all this spiritual stuff that I've been seeing and feeling a strong presence, please send me a sign to confirm that this is all real. Mm. And in that moment. Um, uh, uh, this when we were younger, we would have this um, beautiful brown and white pigeon bird that would fly in our garden, and it 
it, it, it was a, it was a lost pigeon, but it was it belonged somewhere because it had one of those gold Ring, rings around yeah, yeah. its ankle, and it was so beautiful. And it would it stayed in our garden, and it would sit on my dad's shoulder, and we would feed it and things. And it was absolutely beautiful, <laughs> it was like a pet. And we it was there for months, and it would come every single day. And for some reason, that bird popped into my mind, and I said, "I want you to send me a sign of a brown and white bird." And I want it to appear in the most unusual way. It can't just, you know, fly across the sky or it can't just like land on the mm. fence next to you. You know, it has to be undeniable and without a doubt sign. Um, so that was that. So I, so I asked for that sign. Now, the next day was the funeral and it, I completely forgot about the sign I'd asked for. I detached from it really because everything was so busy and I was so busy with everything and I was just trying to get through the day of the funeral. And um, we got through the day of the funeral and it was a very heavy draining day. And, you know, the, the, that night you very just straight to sleep. And the next day we had more of like the family gathering. Um, so everybody came round to um, my mum and dad's house. So it was everybody there that was really important in my mum's life, all of her loved ones. So there was me and my dad, my two sisters, and their children, some of my mum's grandchildren, and then my mum's sister, who I mentioned earlier, who she's very close with, and her brother, who she was also very close with. And we were all, and, and also our partners, so her son-in-law, so my fiance, my sister's fiance, they, they were there. So everybody that was really important to my mum was there. And um, we were all sat in the family room and we're just all chatting away. And all of a sudden we all pause because we all hear this noise behind the fire, like a scuffling. And at that point, um, we think, thinking, what's going on? There's something's fallen behind the fire. And just as my dad got up from the chair to go over and have a look, this bird flew out of the fire, <laughs> um, completely out of the fire, and it was so fast that it darted out of the room, just darted out of the room. Now, what's crazy about this is my nieces, so my mum's grandchildren, uh, my mum and dad had this really big hefty fire guard around the fire because um, if, the, if, the, if the children only yeah, yeah, very yeah. young. Mm. So this fire guard was, it, you know, it was covering the top, it was covering the sides, it was covering the front So how did the, the bird get in, you mean? So how did it get out of, yeah, how, and, oh, and we still don't know. Oh, how, wow. did how did it, it how did it get out from that? Because it fell down, the, it fell down the chimney, out of the fire, but how did it get out of this fire gap? But it, it magically did. So we're, we're all at that point, we're all like, oh my God, there's a bird in the house and everyone's panicking and the grandchildren are so excited. They're loving it. Oh, there's a bird in the house. And they're like so excited about it. And, um, you know, we, we spend a bit of time looking downstairs for it. And then me, me and my dad and my fiance, we went upstairs and we, we thought it, it must've gone upstairs. So at the top of the stairs was the um, bathroom window was wide open, the bathroom at the top, and the, the window was wide open. So we got to the top of the stairs and we thought it must have gone out. It's got to have gone out through this window because, you know, that's what would probably most likely have happened. Um, but, but, you know, we thought, let's just check the bedrooms just in case. So we checked a couple of bedrooms and um, we found it in my mum and dad's bedroom. Now, this was so unusual and unlikely for it to get there because it, it had to make a couple of turns to get there. It wasn't just, it wasn't the first room. <laughs> it knows the house. Yes, it knows, exactly, exactly. It knows, it is, it is so funny. Absolutely, yeah. It was on a mission. It knew where it was going. And yeah, and it, it, it's in the room. So, we, so I see it. And it sat on my mum's side of the bed. Oh. And it sat right next to her frame that I bought her as a wow. child when I was young. And the frame said mother at the top of the frame. Oh. And it was like a souvenir. And it was sat right next to that frame. Wow. But this didn't this didn't twig at this point what to me. Because I I forgot about it. I didn't fit as I was just was seeing that much of a day of thinking, oh, okay. Um, and it, but and so then what happened is it flew and then it, it flew over to the other side of the room to the window and it sat on the curtain pole and at that point you know my day because because I, I think I, I, for me it was just like it didn't all sink in 
And my dad went over to the can you say I'm gonna have to I'm gonna open the window and I'm gonna let it out of the um I'm gonna let it out of the window. And I was like, no, no, wait. And I was like, stop, stop, stop. And then I said, somebody get me my glasses. <laughs> and my fiance went to get me. <laughs> When to get me my glasses? And at this point, I was looking for the colours. So I oh. put my glasses on, and I could already see it with the brown bird. So if this wow. wasn't enough for me, the fact yeah. that oh, yeah, it that came in an unusual way, right. it was sat in my mum and dad's bedroom next to her, um, next to a picture frame with mother on it. It was brown. I was just looking for the white pad because I'd, I'd asked for it to be brown and white bird. So I put my glasses on. And sure enough, there's all of this lovely white speckle Amazing. on its chest and on wow. its wings. Wow. But it was subtle and you couldn't see that without the glasses. Um, and I am quite short sighted, so I did need to put my glasses on to see that. So um, and I just knew in that moment, it looked at me right in the eyes and Aww. it was like, yes, everything you've been thinking, all these spiritual things that you've been feeling um you know knowing that we're souls and we live on all of this stuff that you're talking about is real and all of the you know everything I just knew because when I'd said in the resting room about the sign I said if it's all real I'll write a book on this one day and I will share this story and I will teach spiritual spiritual teachings and yeah and it, it, it just in that knowing it all clicked and it was like yeah this is all real and this is and did you share that with the rest of your family I did so then when it all sunk in I burst out crying I was so happy that the sign yeah that confirmation, yeah, was yeah, very confirmation. Yeah. and I went downstairs and I told the rest of the family and I said exactly what had happened in the resting room I said you know I said I, I'd asked for this sign to prove all of these things and um, I told them that, you know, that I was going to write this book <laughs> and they were all saying, this is, this is amazing. And, and I think as well, like I have to say that, um, had never happened. My mom and dad had lived there 25 years. It never happened once before and it hasn't happened since then. So, you know, six it's years very before. unusual for a pigeon bird to come down the chimney. Yeah. I, I would have thought. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a pigeon bird. It was a smaller bird, oh, but it was. It was brown and white. But still, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, still so unusual. Yeah. and like I said, it never ever happened before, and it hasn't. And it hasn't happened since. And we look back, and we know that was one hundred percent. Your mom. Yeah, the sign, and she'd orchestrated all of that in front of her, in front of everybody. In front of everybody, so you were yeah. mad. Yeah, so I wasn't. <laughs> so I wasn't going crazy on my own. <laughs> Yeah. Has um, this whole experience Im in improved your relationships with your siblings, with your dad? How, how did you be become closer yeah. as a family? Yeah, absolutely. We we all had our own ways of dealing with everything. I went very much down the spiritual side. And my sister, one of my sisters has gone down more of the, the cognitive behavioral therapy side. She's gone more down the mental health side of everything. Right. So that's interesting how we both mm. took like two paths, but you know, two both equal paths that complement each other because hers, she's doing much more like mindfulness and you know, things around that type of, and cognitive behavioral therapy and understanding how the brain works. Whereas I'm just so deep into like the spiritual and the soul. I'm just all soul level stuff and all of this um spiritual work so so yeah and my dad's much more into this spiritual stuff now too oh, because he's me. had ease on he's had ease on signs um he's had some amazing signs but with my dad it's much more pulling pulling them out and like come on dad tell us some more tell us some more and he's like oh well it might not have been real I might have imagined it <laughs> but that's you. typical dads <laughs> yeah yeah and, 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 and so that just birthed you onto your path after that to be to leave your teaching yeah absolutely that did that you did. find it through another healer did somebody work with you or you read books or you just went to do a course or I did it all myself in in the sense of the, the sole purpose work is that what is that what you mean in like mm. finding your purpose yeah mm. I did it I did it all myself and um I, I found what I was meant to do and um when I was younger I did have that dream of, with Jesus a visitation oh yes and it, on, yes and it, yeah and um in in that dream I mean that dream was incredible um 
and you should listen to just just going in there um uh, what we talk about you one of our podcasts how we did we, yeah the picture yes we? we did actually I'll send it to you afterwards. Okay, yes, we did, okay. Actually. We did a podcast yeah. on Jesus, actually. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, 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 I'd love to listen. Yeah. But anyway, um, go on. yeah. He, he, um, I had a visitation, and he came to me in a visitation, and it was so incredible. In your meditation, like, he came. No, to you in, in, a, in a dream, sleep. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was sleep, sleep, and it was um, a visit. I think it was a visitation. Um, looking How did back he look now. to you? How was he coming? Yeah. Yeah. So he, so he was very tall. He was, he had this very, very big presence, almost like a giant presence. Like he just felt bigger than everybody else there. Mm. Um, and we were sat in this like church and I remember the seats on either side of the church and there was like the aisle down the middle and he walks in the aisle and he just had this like beautiful presence. And he was wearing this like burgundy wine reddish colored cloak you know and there's pictures of, of, of Jesus in that cloak mm. and he, he was wearing this cloak but it wasn't like a royal like fancy cloak or anything just a, it was act- just a normal cloak and it actually had that look to it where if you were to touch it it would um be very dusty and very earthy mm. um yeah so he he had that like that that on and I remember thinking oh that, that's it I just remember that so clearly and he was um he was there in this church and he he called on me and he pointed to me mm. and the communication was, was that you will teach my work and you will teach spirituality wow. and you will be a spiritual teacher wow. and the next morning I remember telling my mom and dad I remember I was, I was only young I was like in you know like 14 or 15 year old wow. Uh, and you know at the time <laughs> you're thinking oh like I'm not going to be able to do that and you know it's um, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, uh, and, and also you know you're young and you want to be cool and, and uh, you know and, and at the time you know when you're young and a teenager you're not really thinking about these big things um and I remember um coming down the stairs and telling my mum and dad and they were like oh yeah yeah but I bet you did I bet you did <laughs> but really I had you know and, and then they believed me and they were like yes actually that sounds amazing so I just always remember that and that all came that all came through really heavily with like losing my mom yeah and almost like that was a connection that catapulted point. you it's like an yeah. awakening yeah mm. it rem- it reminded me and i was thinking maybe that's what that was about maybe I think yeah. so your mother don't doesn't just take their life for the sake of it there's obviously a big spiritual awakening message for everyone and yeah. it catapults them into Pushes you to forward. where they're meant to be yeah absolutely yeah yeah so i think now looking back it was like that's how it was all connected. it's not just a suicide and they take their life for me it's they've they've taken on a very powerful um uh, spiritual journey very mm. and because it touches so many people's lives yeah. it can be hundreds sometimes you yeah. know, not just a few. It's not just the family. It's it's a lot of lot of people. It's a ripple effect. As a ripple effect, so that's a massive um, taking on for others. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's yeah. how I perceived it. It's, yeah. You know, because we had a friend a month before my brother also did the same thing, and it's had a massive effect on the community, yeah. uh, spiritual yeah. community. So, to me, like you're saying, it catapulted you, your sister. You all grew really to a very. I think it really elevates. Ele- if you want it to, if you want it yeah. to, and you're ready to open and receive and understand, I think you your spiritual growth just goes up here. Absolutely, um, and it and it's not. I mean, it's not a great way to do it, but yeah, it, we all chose that and confirmed that before as a unit before we came down. It did transform everything. Like I said, we were such a fearful family around, you know, death, and we didn't talk about life after death. And whereas now we do, and you know, we we understand. And that your mom's still around. And and yeah, still, my mom's still here. Have you seen her since, and darling? I've had dreams, yeah, with her in, and um, just dreams where she's been hugging me in a dream, and I've been thinking, and I've been hugging the back, saying, "How are you here? How are you here? And are, are you real?" And things, and she's like, "Yes, like touch my hands, I'm real." And I've had all all these, you know, dreams, and um, my fiance has had a really strong visitation from my mum as well because he was very, very worried at the very beginning. He didn't know how I was going to handle everything. 
and he had a strong visitation very early on. He was probably one of the first to get one, actually. Um, oh. And they say that sometimes they can, because he's very spiritual. Um, he was on the spiritual path, probably like, a, like I probably said like a little bit before me in a way, because he's always had these big dreams and spiritual visions. And so he, he was very open to this. And um, he had a um, visitation from my mom and she communicated with him that everything was going to be okay. And he, t he told us all of that at the time. And this was before the funeral. So he had it very early on. But I think it's because she was able to get to him because he yeah, was all, you were all emotionally. We were um, too t attached. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but yeah, and, and my fiance, um, he he um had like he he'd he'd been to an event where he'd heard this letter that it was from Ramdas, oh, um, yes. a letter a letter to Rachel, and I've got like a little piece to share if that's okay oh, with with your yeah, audience yeah, no, because I think it, yeah, it really helped me um wow. when I um when I when I'd lost my mom and I like to read a little bit because what what we did is that you can change the name out for Rachel to your loved one's name. So it's so powerful because whoever's lost, if anybody's lost anybody, it doesn't have to be to suicide, it can be to anything. Mm. You change out the name Rachel and you can put in your family member's name and it just sounds so powerfully um, strong. It's so lovely, but I'll, I'll share it. So it starts with, your, well, this is the section in the middle. For your pain is Rachel's legacy to you. Not that she or I would inflict such pain by choice, but there it is. And it must burn its purifying way to completion. For something in you dies when you bear the unbearable. And it is only in the dark night of the soul that you are prepared to see as God sees and to love as God loves. Mm. In my heart, I know that you and she will meet again and again and recognize the many ways in which you have known each other. And when you meet, you will know in a flash that now is not given for you to know why this had to be the way it was. Mm, and that wow, yeah it was and I, I remember beautiful. when he shared that with me and that changed so much yeah, for me it, because yeah, it's beautiful it's beautiful because it makes you then all this thing we're talking about that the soul comes here with lessons you know we, we come your soul we, does get closer yeah. to the divine yeah Absolutely. I mean not every everyone some people find it very difficult and can't ever get over it and then end yeah. up going with them sometimes but on a mass if 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 you put it out to the universe and you you put it out that spiritual support at that time floods in yeah it does flood in in some way in yeah. some help through someone there is it's not like when something tragic happens there's no one there there's always help there's always help there's okay. always help whatever circumstances there's it always comes in yeah you know Absolutely. yours it was multiple support mm. uh you know and uh, but there's always 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 help if we pray and ask for it yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and there was something else that had that had really transformed um the way that i saw suicide as well it was from have you have you heard of robert schwartz who's got a book called your soul's gift no, no um, i haven't actually. and he's got another one called your soul's plan Okay, so I'd like to share this because this is so powerful. This was probably one of the biggest things after losing a loved one to suicide that, again, transformed my, the way I've seen it from the soul level. Mm. So it's um, there's an, ent an entire chapter, and I think it's in Your Soul's Gift. So it's by Robert Schwartz. There's an entire chapter in there on understanding suicide from the soul level. And in the book, he tells the story of a woman who was called Carolyn who lost her only son, Cameron, to suicide just after his high school graduation. Mm. And they went to a medium and this medium was able to channel Jesus. Wow. And also souls of suicide. So she specialized in that area. And she was able to channel these really extremely powerful messages from Jesus and from suicide souls from their point of view of how everything had happened and why things had happened. Oh wow. And um, there's two things that really stood out for me from this, from this. And the first one was, I know you mentioned it at the beginning, Buddy, about the um, the religious side of suicide and it's seen as a, a stigma, stigma, yeah. 
And there was this beautiful quote from Jesus that she channeled. And, it, and he says, I wish to take away the traditional judgment about suicide, that it is a great sin. God, our spirit, certainly does not feel that way. God has the greatest compassion for those that take their lives in despair. There is always help for them on the other side. They are never alone. And I just think that was so crucial because, you know, it's an unnecessary fear and suffering that we don't have to think about. You Correct. know, we shouldn't be thinking, um, you know, are our, our loved ones safe on the other side? Like, absolutely not. Of course they are. And I just thought I wanted to share that because that's so important, I think. But, um, you know, to... you're 100% right because as you're saying that I'm getting goosebumps because we don't know if that person or that soul is alone at the time when it happens i don't think they yeah. are i don't think yeah. they're alone no. i think there's some sort something of something there and they see it there's some they sort of a yeah. there's someone there to console them to help them 100%. through the process yeah. and to help them go through it because it's it's really difficult i'm sure yeah, yeah absolutely yeah and, and it's a very brave thing to do yeah yes yes it's not a coward thing no it's a brave thing it is. And I think as well, it's the brave thing for all of us and for the families as well, because I like before my spiritual awakening, you would always think when these bad things happen to families and people like you wouldn't understand it. And you think, oh, like how awful I'm going through that thing. Yeah. But now I look at it as like we're advanced souls, you know, and we yeah. chose these advanced lessons and, you know, we're, like, we're brave and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, you know, like I would see it as healing, ancest ancestral healing and all of this big thing that, you know, we, we're doing. And, and on my mum's side, there is this um, anxiety and depression. And well, we're going to heal that now, we you know. And it's, it's the same you know, also and, and, with my, um, yeah. my brothers, my dad's side. It was in his family mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. And, and, yeah. and I only thought about it when it happened. I actually didn't click. Yeah. At the, you know, before then. Yeah, I didn't and I thought, either. Oh, and it's, there's a line here. Whoa, absolutely. let's sort this out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, and I and I think that that's you know part of our soul level and our soul lessons as well. And, and I think um, also, which is interesting, and I've I've you know actually Russell Brand covers it a lot, and he set up a community for mental health. I think on his um, website, but also uh, somebody else put out there the other day that, you know, during the pandemic and especially last year, the, the rate of suicide is horrendous. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's more yeah. and, and more. So there's obviously a very spiritual awakening, thing, awakening yeah, uh, going on for everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, before it was, I remember when I was young, actually being at school and somebody in my class, he committed suicide I mean, it was like, oh, like it was a rare occurrence. Correct. Now, when, you know, you speak to someone, they all know someone. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah and, and I do, I think it's, I remember it like in 2015, it felt it felt um, like it wasn't very awareness wasn't very big then. And then it felt no, like it was getting no, Small. and then it felt it was getting better. Like, you know, the royal family were doing things. I remember like um, William Kate and Harry yeah, I remember that. together. I, and, remember, I don't know what happened yeah, to you, but I remember. No, it. and it was just seemed to become an awareness. And then you're right, since the whole pandemic has come about, it's just took everything as a mm. major step back. And we've We've now it's 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 heightened it so much more and yeah but um would if before we go I mean it's it's an amazing story I'm so glad you shared it was with that and the Jesus and the prayers it's they're beautiful yeah. and if if there was something you'd like to leave listeners with who are going through a, a, someone passing just anyone that's just passed over or through suicide or what what message would you give to them okay yeah so there's two things so the first one is complete forgiveness for yourself for your, your loved ones and you per, and the person that has taken their own life just forgiveness in all areas because we don't once we do that and we let go of like trying to find out why and we let go mm -hmm. of trying to find out the answers for everything we then can like i think that's how i got my sign was because i'd let when i went in that restroom room everything went all the fear all the all the anger all the trying to find out why and pitch everything together and none of it mattered you know and none of it mattered at that point 
So I would advise anybody who's going through it is to try and get out of that place as quickly as possible. It is normal. We will spend time there. I spent a lot of time there. But if you can quickly get out of there, and, and I got out of there pretty quickly when I think two weeks is probably the time yeah. of losing a loved one and then a funeral. So drop the searching for why. Forgive and just let it surrender it all and don't attach and feel like don't identify and define your loved one from that one event you know they had a full life of joy and happiness and beautiful memories and not to just link them to that one event you know because we don't have to overshadow it with that heaviness mm. um that's one thing and then the other thing i would like to share is um I mean, there's so much I could share. I mean, there's another one here from this um, this book that I was saying. Um, and he he was saying how, well, I think we've kind of covered it, how it's the soul's lessons. And it's, you know, it, it, we couldn't, we couldn't stop anything from happening and we can't take on that that duty and that power to think that we could prevent anything from happening. And he says, he says here, that um, every suicide prevented by outside forces was indeed prevented. And he says that if there's any doubt in the soul's mind and they are not sure, spirit will intervene, spirit will stage an intervention. It will, the phone will ring, a bird will fly past the window, um, something will happen, even an actual earth angel will appear. And he talks about this, and this again is from the book, Your Soul's Gifts, Robert Schwartz. And he says in there that there is no, that, 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 that spirit will take an intervention. And if it goes ahead, it's because the soul has made that decision. And universal law of that decision is it, it, it's, that it's free will, it's going ahead. And it's because of the soul's evolutionary growth. And it's because of the loved ones and families evolutionary growth. So it has this bigger picture, exactly mm. what we've been talking about today. Yeah, it has a bigger exact, has impact, this bigger, bigger. under yeah, yeah, the bigger ripple effect. Mm. And absolutely. So then that takes away that feeling for all of us yes. who are left behind, where mm -hmm. we're feeling like we could have done something to Why stop it all. Did, Why yeah. did it happen? And we Guilt, feel like we're with a victim and mm. you know, we we, we don't have to be in that place either nice. because if we can look at it from this higher spiritual soul level, it just changes your mindset on it 100%. Well, thank oh. you for that. And we will uh, get the name of the book and we'll put it in there. You know, when we yeah. put this out, the name of the books will be in there for people to buy them. I think it's important. But I, I think it was a, a, a wonderful story today. I think really heartfelt and I think magical and quite a few miracles in there at the same time yeah. that they're not just, you know, a miracle that's like, they just think it has to be walking on water. There's miracles every day. And um, to cover a very important topic that will hopefully someone listening will help them and the books and what we've said and, you know, the, 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 the Ramdas uh, prayer that you sent out. And so, yeah, so we really thank you for sharing such an emotional, personal experience because i know it's not easy to talk about things like that um but we you know we just you know it's been a lovely a lovely discussion and we've really enjoyed it and especially at a time for us as well that's it's also been very recent you know but yeah. uh, understanding completely where you're coming from yes thank you yeah. sharon yeah it's oh, been lovely. we really thank appreciate you so the time much. you've taken to to speak to us and today. we will share yeah. with everybody your details as well in the uk if anyone yeah. would like to reach out or come talk to you or speak to you about your experience or someone that's needing help or whether it's yeah. spiritually or emotionally you know in the same yeah. situation absolutely thank you so much it was so lovely to share this with you and i just feel so connected to you both of you and it's just yeah thank you oh, so much for having you. me thank on. you darling thank you thank you, thank you so, so much. please feel free to contact us at info at the magical medicals podcast.com that's info at the magical medicals podcast.com Feel free to reach out, but thank you so much for listening to us today.